going on, everybody? Welcome back to 343 TV and Electronic Music Essentials with yours truly, Justin Beck. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you that are coming back, welcome back. I already see some names in there that I recognize. What up, Enigmatic Onion? What up, Rache McBean? What up, MV Beckham? What up, John Kingston the Third? What is good, the Counts Lore? I don't know you yet, man, but nice to meet you. What up, Silent State? Uh, so if you're joining in here and wondering what on earth is going on, well, as I mentioned, this is 343 TV, and this is the online educational and demonstrational, explorational, was not a word, branch of 343 Labs. And we are a school based in New York City, we teach electronic music production. We're also based in Berlin and, of course, on the interwebs. So if you are interested in upping your production game, then please visit 343labs.com and check out some of the course offerings we have. Um, as for this particular show, today, uh, this, this is called Electronic Music Essentials. And what I do is I, each week try to come up with a cool topic that I think is useful for you guys um, to learn about and will improve um, and will improve your production skills kind of like immediately right also I should say what up to Max Wild who's also in the chat sorry I didn't see you there dude um, and he is of course our fearless leader living over in Berlin um, so today I'm actually going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. So usually I pick a topic and I beat it to death, you know, and try to explore all the different things, be it compression, EQing, arrangement, reverb, whatever it is, right? But today, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of an against the clock session. And I want to do this because I think it'll be useful for you guys to see what it looks like when I actually have to produce or choose to produce totally at my normal rate and speed as opposed to, you know, talking through and walking through everything that I'm doing. Now, with that being said, I'm of course going to talk about why I'm doing things. I'm going to narrate my creative process and my thought process and all that kind of stuff. And any questions that you might have as I'm doing this, um, you know, I'll be sure to answer. So the idea here is it is currently 1.05 Eastern time. So I'm assuming I'm not going to get started until 1.06. So, and it sure enough is 1.06. So what I'm going to do is I am going to jump into Ableton and I'm just going to produce for one hour and I'm going to try to make a uh, house or techno record. And so I actually want to get your guys input. Should I make a house record or a techno record today? Um, so if you guys could just lob that into the chat, maybe do we can do a little vote, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll see what tickles my fancy. What's going on, Pavel K2? In the meantime, what's up, Paralemming Wittus? Welcome, man. Simple Sam, of course, here as always. So the second that I get some genre suggestions, either house or techno, remember, one of those two, because I don't actually know what I feel like doing, then we are go. okay, Enigmatic Onion says house, 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 house. Okay, Alan R says techno, we need a deciding vote. Okay, woo, MV Beckham, house always wins. Oh, interesting, house, techno, oh my God, house, all right. Techno, oh, double techno from Pavel, oh my God, this is so overwhelming, what are we going to do? All right. Well, so far, it seems like house is 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 a little bit of oh, tech house. Get out of here, Will Joseph. That's not an option, man. <laughs> All right. It seems like the people or at least some of the people want house music. And since this is a democratic channel, <laughs> we're going to do house music. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the Ableton machine. And uh, I'm just going to go for it. So right now it's 107. So what I'm going to do is make music for one hour straight against the clock. And I'm going to try to make a whole track. We're going to see if I can do it. Every part of the process. All right. So it's 108. Yeah. I'm going to go to 208. 
starting now. So the very first thing I'm going to do, of course, is find a kick drum that I like. Oh, yeah. The other thing I should mention is I am going to um, only use Ableton sounds. I might use some plugins from some other companies, but I'm only going to use Ableton sounds. Um, it's 50-50. You guys have been counting. All right. Well, you know what? I'm in the mood to make house music now, so too bad. That's pretty nice little house music kick. BPM, that's a good call. What BPM am I going to work at? Hmm. I think I'm going to work at 122. I like that BPM. 122 is is nice. It's groovy. Uh, all right. Get out of here. So I love to work um, with audio. I don't really like to use too much MIDI when it comes to drums. I just find it to be, I don't know, not as, not as useful for me. All right. Um, so I'm just going to start off by making a beat, right? Quickest way to do it. And for those of you that are just joining in, I see more and more people filtering in. What I'm doing is, is I'm going against the clock and I'm going until 2.08. So right now it's 1.09 and this is Eastern time, American Eastern time. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can make how much I can make right in one hour. Try to do a whole track. I love 707 claps. To me, they're the nicest, the smoothest out of the set, out of the classic Roland sounds. I'm gonna go with that. Gotta fatten them drums up. Yes, we will certainly be fattening the drums up. Oh, simple Sam, you would have voted for metal. That would have been cool. I could have gotten down with some metal. <laughs> I'm actually just going to start with this. I like this right now. It's simple. I think I'm going to layer in this this heavier kind of wonky clap. Uh, so what I like to do when I'm producing is I like to just like make sure that the sounds I'm starting with are the exact sounds that I want and like really inspire me in the direction I want to go. So I don't want all the high frequency crap in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the auto filter and just take that stuff. I like that just to fatten up the low end a little bit. And then I want my kick to be a little chubbier. So I'm going to go ahead and drag on the Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack. And I'm going... And I'm going to put on this. There we go. That feels better. Just fatten up the kick a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up an instrument. I'm going to open up Wavetable. And I'm going to probably create some kind of pad sound real quick. Now, one thing you're going to notice is I'm going to basically like draw everything in. That's not necessarily how I work, but if I'm doing house music, I just know that style like the back of my hand. And so I'm just going to probably do that. I am going to put on musical typing so I can design a sound. Oh, no, no, I said I was going to use third-party plugins. I'm just not going to use third-party sounds. Only things that are native to Ableton in terms of sounds. So I'm going to create a uh, chord. And 
I'm really in the in the mood to use like a nine chord. So this isn't a nine. This is a major se minor seven. kind of want want sound i think i'm gonna throw in a uh some kind of weird shape let's try some noise kind of like that as a pattern. Let's see. So I'm just playing all that in so I have the option. I'm not going to use all that. That's totally unnecessary. Yeah, so this, this is good right here. Just this little bit. All right. And so now I'm going to go in here and actually change the chords a little bit. I'm going to add on a nine. I like that. Boom, 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 boom. For now. Now we're going to get a little jazzy with it. So what I'm going to do now is, right, I'm going to make the sound, tune the sound a little more now that I have the idea. Yep. Now, one of my favorite, favorite plugins to use is a free plugin from Tall Audio Line. It's called the chorus. Now I'm actually going to turn on the output volume of the synth. Because it was distorting the plugin. And I'm definitely going to use a little bit of delay on these chords. And I'll just use the Ableton delay for that. I'll probably do a ping pong delay. So I'm hearing this is little subtle bit of tick in the sound here, like like low frequency, where 
if I uh, pull in the EQ8, you can see there's this low frequency stuff, so I want to get rid of that. Perfect. That's all I want. I want it to be nice and fluffy. Now, also just to add a little, yeah, let's actually save it. I didn't mean to do that. But. So let's go. I'm gonna lay, lay always label everything. Super important. And so I think I'm gonna add in the baseline now. Um, now some people, you know, do this in a different order. There's no correct way to do this, right? It's just like whatever you feel inspired to do. And first, I'm just gonna build the idea of like what this of what I think this song could be. Uh, my baseline I'm hearing is boom, 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 boom. boom. So I'm going to see if I can plug, play that in. Uh, and I'm going to use the analog synth, detune the oscillators a little bit, come to here and turn the envelope depth down, turn my filter down, take my release time and turn it down out the resonance just a little bit so i know i, I kind of generally know like what uh settings i like for certain types of sounds you know because i've just been doing this so long um but i'm always tweaking after right so i just give myself a rough estimate of like where i want to be So what are my root notes again? I don't even remember. D to C. Pretty straightforward. Oh, is it C sharp? Uh, oh, it's D to C sharp. But the girls. All right, so on my keyboard, I can't play what I want, so I'm just going to draw this in, you know. Um, I know what I'm hearing. So I'm hearing... So actually what's happening here is I think the, 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 for my taste, the C sharp is too low. So I'm going to raise everything up a whole step and I'm, I'm going to also do that to my synths. 
we have. So that's a good, good starting point for me. So now what I'm going to probably do is, is I'm just going to duplicate everything over. That sounded... Nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of a uh, percussive effect. And again, for anyone that's just joining and doesn't know what the hell is going on, um, I am making a track from scratch. And uh, yeah, okay. So if uh real quick with the with the sound the bass sound that i made on analog just so i can i don't want to keep you guys in the dark um i just used let's see it's not even a go-to process it's more just i know how to get the sounds that i want right so um I used, I turn the, I know how these synths work, you know, like I know the quirks of analog. So I know that if you turn up, you know, the envelope a little bit, uh, and if you turn down the, the filter a lot, and if you turn up the resonance more than you normally would, uh, and that if you detune the oscillators just a touch, you can use both of them. Uh, and you know, I like combining the square and the, uh, and the, the saw shape. And then I, you know, use the unison a little to detune it. And then you, I, you know, shape the envelope so it sounds chubby, and um, uh, yeah, you know. Also, you know, you can I say you can jump back through the stream and like uh, look at what I'm doing if I'm going too fast at times. So I'm gonna go. So that's what I'm gonna add in right here. And again, I'm going to do this with audio because I like to use audio. Now I'm going to have to swing this, but um, I'm actually going to do that manually. I'll show you what I mean. Thank you. 
My pleasure, bro. All right, so I'm going to take all the 16th notes now and swing them. Um, okay, well, what I actually could do, I guess what I want. All right, I guess the quicker way to do this actually is just going to turn this into a clip. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I want to swing this. So I'm going to turn it into a clip. And go into my grooves, right? And I just like these simple ones down here. Right, so I'm I'm looking to um what's it call? Uh you know, make house feel. And so you wanna swing it when when you got the house feel. kind of is this actually doing anything it doesn't even sound like it's really doing that much this isn't doing shit that's weird all right let me try this all right oh it is a little okay Okay, yeah, so that's working. Now, I want to change that sound a little. Make it something way cooler. So I'm going to throw on the um, Corpus. That's a cool sound. That's a cool, weird thing to use. So like what what notes am I using, right? I'm gonna tune it to that I'm using an E and a uh, D sharp. So let me go ahead and uh, tune this to an E. Actually F sounds nice. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use this effect from this plugin from D16 Audio Group called Decimort, which is a bit crusher plugin, to add a little detail into the sound. And I'm going to filter it. So it's a little more lo-fi. Now I'm going to use this return track. I'm going to get rid of this reverb so I don't like the Ableton reverb at all, if I'm being totally honest. And I'm going to use this, this type of reverb. And I'm going to make a small room. And then I'm going to use a short pre-delay and send this reverb into some reverb. And when I 
actually I might also do is use a little bit of delay on this sound. I like using little bits of delay. And I love using this this plugin called the repeater, also from D16. This is just that little bit of delay. And I also think I could probably do with cutting out some low frequencies now. So that's cool. All right, so we're starting to get somewhere here. So now, obviously, what I need next is a hi-hat pattern, right? And so I will actually go ahead and use a, um, a, drum, a drum kit, a uh, drum rack. What am I saying? And let me find some drums that I like. Um, hi-hats. So I like live feeling hi-hats, live sounding hi-hats, but I also like 909 hi-hats. I like that acoustic sounding thing. By the way, for anyone that's just joining here on the stream, uh, what I'm doing is an against the clock and I have 30, about 30 minutes left. I'm going to try to almost make an entire track. You might be thinking, oh my God, in 30 minutes, you only have this loop. Just wait and see. I like that. Those are cool. So right now I'm just giving myself the as many options as possible for like hi hats, so I can just make something cool. I like that. I like that, and I like that. All right. So now what I'll do is right is I'll come in here and I will make myself a little clip and try to start dicking around with some hi hats. Um, and I'll probably do that for the, make the clip, the length of the groove. I like that one. I actually kind of like that. All right, so I'm going to also apply the groove here. So as I'm working, it'll, you know, start swinging properly. Turn down this velocity here. So I want to make this more subtle.
All right, so I like this as just like a starting groove, which is cool for the hi-hats. This is like my, what I'll call this is like my tight hats. I use a lot of different layers of hi-hats when I produce house music. Oh, that was my mistake. That was foolish of me. I adjusted the wrong hi-hat. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to do the same exact thing down here with my hi-hat bank, but come up with the other hat that I want to use. Now, this one I'm going to just do like a much shorter pattern with because I'm just going to like straight up loop it out um, because this is going to be a hi-hat, like a really simple one. I like this one. Although what I do want to do is, is make these a little bit off. So I'm going to hit command four to turn off my, oops. I'm going to hit command four to turn off my grid. And I'm going to drag this a little early and this a little late. And this one a little early too. And so what I'm going to do is I like to like make the groove unpredictable a little bit and hard to like fully put your finger on. And so what I'm doing is right is I'm turn I'm making each of these hi hats a little bit off. I'm going to put this one though perfectly on. Just so that when we swing swing around two times, it like kind of there's one place where we really just hit it clean. Right, so that that'll feel nice. So this is going to be my uh, what I'll just call my pulse hat. If we want it, that or sharp hat. That's a sharp hat. That's a very sharp hat you got there, heavy. Sorry, it's really stupid. To me, hi hats are always yellow. Um, just for whatever reason. So I'm going to do that. Although the tight hats, I think, are kind of dark blue. That's how I'm hearing them right now. What I might do is I might go into my sound toys real quick and uh, go ahead and drag on the micro shift onto these hats to spread them out a little bit. I don't want to put them totally out wide, but I can spread them just enough that they'll be weird. That's cool. So it's going to make the track a little wider. Right, so it spreads them out a little bit. Adds a little bit of character, right? Now it's about time to try to start arranging it a little bit. I have one final synth that I might want to add in. I'm hearing so. See if I can make that happen.
Alright, so let's see. Thank you very much, uh, SFSF. So as I'm producing, I'm considering the mix. I'm structuring the mix and building it all together so that I barely really have to, I don't really have to mix too much at the end. Phrygian and actually I'm totally I'm realized I'm just totally ripping off my good friend Matt FX's uh, song called face to face which just came out on Kitsune music so you should check that out <laughs> find the next hat that I'm going to use to really push the beat forward and what I'll do is is I'll use the same rhythmic timing of these hats or maybe it seems like I might you know I might just need a normal 909 man just a good old-fashioned 909 open hat so many closed hats. I don't even know there are this many closed hats. I'm always looking for closed hats. I never find a closed hat. It's like sound like Larry David. I'm just gonna actually lock those in normal. Screw it.
shorter. percussion I can do I hear so I'm gonna go ahead and do my drum rack and probably find an 808 Tom that's a good start one of these two I'm going to do the same thing, apply the swing. Yep, so I'm just going to repeat this. Cool. So, um, all right. So check. So now I'm gonna shape that sound the way I want it. No, I want that sound to be different, right? So what I do is, is I don't worry about the sound being perfect at first. I just make it, and then, uh, oh, excuse me. Wait, so, okay. Uh, and then I worry about shaping the tone after I make it. I want to get rid of that transient. So I could use a transient shaper or I could just. That's what I want. Tom's a little more.
creates a little bit of top high frequencies to cut through. So that's enough material that I can start like genuinely composing with. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and delete all of my melodic information for the first 17 bars. Definitely this. These don't need to be here. This is not coming in for a minute. So I'm going to leave that there. Uh, I don't need my well, my sharp. No, this is my sharp hat, right? This is my 909 open hat. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange like a bat out of hell because I only got like 15 minutes on my against the clock left. Now this drum, this tom sound also is something that gets added. So this is going to be my intro. And then the chords will start coming in. I don't always like to do this, but I'm gonna actually sidechain my chords off of my kick. All right, so let's see. Right there at bar 25, bring in those hats just to spice things up a little. filter from this slate EQ. So I'm going to do a high pass filter on the kick drum. Um, starting at bar 33. Um, and then maybe bar 41. I'll bring it back in. We'll do a slow burn type of house track. I don't want to do like one of these fucking crazy build up things. So I'll take this and also just because I like to like keep consistency in terms of curves and stuff like that. So I'm going to use the um, and so 93 or so. Uh, where's the bass? That my neighbor just texted me. He's like, dude, how much longer are you going to be using noise? Because the kick drum is killing me. Which is always a good sign, right? That means the kick is in there. <laughs> Such a dick. And 
then I'll just kind of slope it down like here so the bass drops in. I'll bring actually this in now. I have to tell my neighbor that I'm going to stop soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that automation over. Definitely don't need these crazy toms yet. I'm gonna do that same thing with the bass. Well, not that, but this part at least. I'm gonna copy that over. Bar 49. Now what I'm gonna do is, is on my delay, I don't need, so I'm actually gonna use this plugin from Universal Audio, a reverb plugin, it's like a master, a global reverb that I can send everything to in, in a buildup. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly assume that I don't want any frequencies under like 500 hertz in my reverb. So I'm going to high pass that out. Uh, all right, now I'm gonna... S slide it back on down the kick and then we're going to add everything back in um, not the toms yet but that's where now the, the new hi-hats will come in and what I'm going to do is is I'm going to take out I don't need any of those. I'm going to take out the chords and just have the bass rock. This program is called Ableton Spirit Travels. And I don't know what you mean by if there are filters in it. There's all sorts of really useful stuff in here. All right, yeah, so I'm gonna now use, I'm gonna have the chords open up a little bit.
claps right there. Love it, Beckham. I guess actually I'll just, I'm just going to hold that note and I'm going to take the reverb and turn it down. Oh, I have so little time left. Uh, ah. uh, take the reverb, automate it down. Oh my God. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate the LFO rate. Um, man. I'm going to go really fast. Like that, um, and I'm, yeah, let's see. Maybe just like that. No, okay. So what I'm gonna actually do is, is I'm gonna change the rate to hertz briefly right here so that I can just slide it up like really gradually. Um, and we'll go like these. Oops. That's exactly what I want. Nice. And then I just have one final thing I want to do. If you guys just let me to just go like this. That rate, I might just want to have it creep up. Cool. And I'm going to maybe go like this. Boom, boom. One, two. All right, I went over one minute. I'm really sorry, guys. And I'm going to swing it in. So I just want to make that drop nice. All right. So for everyone that wasn't here for the start of this whole thing, um, let's see what I just did in one hour. This was my against the clock. So let's see how I did. I'm going to do this. I just, I just, I want to do this. I just let me do one more thing to just finish out the arrangement a little bit. Cause it deserves to be finished. All right, 
Now let's listen to my <laughs> one hour against the clock. guys Whew. well that was that was a fun little hour and as much as i would love to stick around i must admit that i have other things that i not only need to do but want to do uh so really appreciate everyone sticking around and uh watching me do that i hope that you found it helpful to see how i go about producing um, and like I said, that was against the clock, right? So if you were just tuning in and you weren't sure what was happening, you're like, oh, this is a sick track. Where'd this come from? Well, it came totally from scratch in the last uh, hour. And um, yeah, so, you know, I hope that you found that insightful. Maybe you learned a couple things. Um, and I, of course, always appreciate you guys talking in the chat and whatnot. And uh, it was great to have all you guys in here. Um I'll be streaming again next week on Wednesday for 343 TV, the Electronic Music Essentials show. And uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet on 343, go ahead and do that. We have an ever-growing uh, community of really talented producers. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of really cool people that you can be meeting from just being on the streams and being on our Discord, which I also encourage you to go do. Um, and of course, keep an eye out for our free giveaways each week. This week, we are giving away some really cool Arturia synth stuff. Uh, tomorrow, we got Icarus Moth streaming. So please do go and also watch him. He's a super talented guy. Makes some really cool music. So until next time, this is J.
Justin Beck signing off for 3 for 3 TV. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and day, wherever you may have been tuning in from. Peace.